In this video we will cover the main features of the procedural turn-in-place system for UE5. It will allow you to procedurally generate turn-in-place motions for any animation at any required angle. It's also possible to integrate this in any character-based project in just a few minutes. As you can see on the screen, I can rotate at any required angle and the animation will adapt to that rotation. As we explore the showcase scene, you will see that we have different mannequins with different starting animations and they are all adapting properly. So the system is procedurally defining where the feet should be placed to achieve the required motion. It will also adapt pretty well to any other control risks you have. So this yellow mannequin is actually using the UE5 default IK and you can see that they both integrate pretty well. This works with UE5 and UE4 as well. These two mannequins are the UE4 default characters and these ones are the UE5. It's also possible to customize how the steps, how long the steps will take. This giant mannequin is actually using a much slower um, duration curve. This is something that you can also define, as well as the step height and many other features. The system includes a complete PDF manual as well as YouTube tutorials. Now we're going to see how you can get started with the turn in place component and later we will cover integrating this with other character based projects. So first of all, I recommend you to go to the turn in place um, folder and to the maps folder. Inside it you will find the showcase scene. If you hit play here, you will be able to play with the default UE5 mannequin with the turn in place component already integrated. So if I just hit the tab key here, I'm going to face the, the current camera rotation. And if I hold down the right mouse button, you will see that I'm, I'm, I can strafe and the character will always face the camera. If I stop running and if I turn the camera around, you will see that the character will rotate her torso until I exceed the threshold, which we can define later, that it's used to define if a turn in place motion will trigger. So right now it is, it's at uh, 60 degrees. So if I exceed that number, the character will begin to rotate. I can also use the UE4 mannequin, so these are the characters that we are using right now. Um, if I use the UE4 default character, you will see that we have the same functionality here. If I just hit the tab key, it's going to rotate, and if I hold down the right mouse button, I will begin to strafe. Now we're going to cover integration with other character-based systems and we're going to use the third-person template as an example. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to open our own character blueprint and um, in the case of the third-person template, it's inside the third-person folder on blueprints. Now we have to go to the components section on the upper left, click on add and search for the turn in place component. Then we're going to click on the class default option here and we're going to search for the tick group. And we're going to make sure that everything here is set to during physics. Now we're going to hit compile and save. Then we're going to search for the third person character blueprint included on the turn in place system. And we're going to copy the blue and green sections here. Now the green section is optional, but I recommend copying it. We're going to hit compile and save. Now we're going to search for our own animation blueprint. Since we're using the third person template, we can find it on the character soldier, mannequins, animations. It's the ABP money by default. And we're also going to open the money animation that we can find on the turn in play system because we're going to copy some functionality from one to the other. So you can find it on the anim blueprints folder, UE5 ABP money example. So on your own animation blueprint, we have to go to the class settings option here 
and on the interface section click on add and search for the turn in place interface. Hit compile and save. Then let's go to the money example, the, the one that comes with the turn in place system, go to the interface section at the left and search for the get turn in place control rig animation. We're going to copy the content from this function to the other. So let's go to the interface section again, open this function and paste the content. Make sure to connect the pins and make sure to right click on the turn in place control rig variable and hit create variable. Hit compile and save. Now let's go back to the money example and let's go to the event graph here and we're going to copy the green and blue code here like this and make sure to right click on these variables that have not been created yet and create them. Again, hit compile and save. Now let's go back to the money example. We have two more functions that we have to copy. So the get direction function is one of them. Always make sure to right click on these variables that haven't been created and create them. And let's do the same for the get aim offsets function. Now we're going to the anim graph. I'm going to delete this IK node that comes by default because we already have that on the turn in place blueprint. We're going to the money example here, to the anim graph, and we're going to copy the entire functionality that we have at the end of the graph. And we're going to paste it on our own animation blueprint. Just make sure to connect the nodes. and hit compile and save. Now if I just hit play right now you will see that most of the functionality has already been implemented so if I move the camera around and I just hit the tab key the character will rotate to face the direction that we want and we can see that IK will be working as well but we still don't have strafing in place and that's because we haven't set up the animation so if I try to strafe by holding the right mouse button you will see that this happens so this is an optional part but if you want to, to use the default animations we have to retarget the strafing animations so let's go to the turn in place folder animations strafing and inside strafing we're going to find the blend space strafing UE5 so right click here retarget animation asset Duplicate and retarget animation assets. We're going to select the select the RTG mannequin here and just make sure that the, the money on the left is actually the one that comes with the turn in place um, asset. Let's add the prefix so we can know which asset we are changing. Hit retarget. Now let's go back to our animation blueprint. Let's go to the money example and search inside the anim graph go to locomotion and in the walk run section we're going to just copy the nodes that we have here and we're going to paste them on our own animation blueprint before um, adding the node we should go to the strafing animation here and make sure to select the, the, the blend sprays that we just retargeted Connect these nodes. Hit compile and save. Now if we hit play, and if I hold the right mouse button, you will see that if I just run around, the character will be strafing. 
Let's now have a look at the main customization options that you get with the system. So if you head over to the Turn in Place component, you will find the Configuration section. And here we find the debug rotation and tick and debug steps variables. And we can, these are essentially the arrows that appear below the character and the angle that is shown uh, on the character's feet. And we can remove it as soon as we don't need it anymore. And the steps that we have here is the, 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 the debug that appears whenever we start a rotation. It's the feed prediction. Then we have the turn in place threshold and this figure is basically the, the threshold after which the character will start to, to turn in place. So let, let's have a look at how this works. Right now it's 60. So if I go to, to the game, um, you will see that if I hold the right mouse button, so I, I'm in strafing mode now, and if I rotate for less than 60 degrees, the character will not turn in place, but if I exceed that number, then it will start to do so. So if I change this to 80, the character will not rotate until we get to 80 degrees. Then we have the turn in place max angle, and this is basically um, the, the, the upper limit that the character can rotate. So if I lower this number to, let's say, 60, if I hit play, then the character will only be able to rotate by 60 degrees on each turn. You can see that it takes uh, several motions to make the entire turn in place. We can also define how long each step is going to take, and the way to do it is by changing the angle to duration curve. So if I open the default curve, you will see this asset, and basically this has a point for each combination of degrees and t the time it takes for the entire step. Uh, so if I head over to the top here, um, this is at 180 degrees, so the, the full half rotation, and it's going to take 0 0.4 seconds. If I want the step to be faster, I can just change this number. Let's say I want it to be really fast at 0.25. Um, if I now hit play, the rotation will be very fast. And if I change this to, let's say, 0 0.9, it's going to be really slow. You can have any number of curves for any number of, of characters. You can also change the cooldown, so how long we have to wait between each turn in place motion. And finally, we have this um, the maximum angle for the initial step, and this is a simple way to prevent any feet crossing or collisions. Let me show you an example. So by default it's at 100 degrees, which means that if I want to rotate more, the first step will never exceed that number. So it will be for 100 and then it will do a third step for the rest of the rotation. Now if this was, um, if there wasn't any constraint here, let's say that this was for 180, so uh, we're just um, disabling this right now, this is what would happen if I try to do a full rotation. You can see that we have a lot of ugly uh, feet crossing and that they are colliding, so this is the way we can prevent it. And this will work for pretty much any animation, um, but if you have any issues with that, you can reduce this number. So let's say I change it to um, 70, then the first step will only be up to 70 degrees and it will compensate then on the, on the last step. That was the introduction to the procedural turning place system for UE5. If you like this product, please consider leaving a review on the marketplace as it allows me to get more visibility and to provide better support. If you have additional questions, you can ask them on this video. You can refer to the PDF manual that you can find on the documentation folder, and you can also ask your question on the UF5 marketplace on the questions section. Thank you.